Hello, Clay Church. Welcome back again. We're here this Sunday to worship the Lord. Um, I'm reminded how blessed we are, and since we are blessed, um, we need to be reminded that we are also sent out to bless other people in the world. Maybe through prayers, maybe through physical help, uh, your you know your brother, your sister in Christ. Um, there are all other things that we can do to help one another. So with that, uh, before we do our worship, why don't we open up in prayer? Father God, I thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for your blessings that you pour out in our lives, Lord. Even though the world sometimes are are um, so 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 full of hate, Lord Jesus, but you are the center who gives love and peace and joy. Father God, I just thank you so much for your church that we are able to gather in your name and that with your name, Lord, power is imparted in us so that we can flow out to the world, Lord Jesus. I thank you so much for this opportunity that we can worship you. Let your name be glorified from this day onward. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Feel free to rise as we sing, Blessed Be Your Name to the Lord. Give and take 
of the earth to the other ends of the earth lord let us hold on to your hope lord jesus let us hold on to your love and your promises father we know that you are a great great father and thank you for being our father jesus Hello everyone, welcome to uh, Clay Church. Um, it's really good um, that we can be together uh, today. I pray that everyone's healthy, that everyone's well, uh, wherever you are. All right. Uh, we are in a series called Blessings and last week we learned about how blessed we are. That blessing is not really about what we receive or what we have, but it's, uh, it's about Jesus actually loved us and died for us. And that's the basic of blessing and because of that, every child of God can say that I am blessed. And today we're going to look at another type of blessings. Um, that's the basic blessing that we, we have when uh, Jesus actually died for us. But then yeah, Jesus, uh, God blessed us with many things. One of the things that God blessed us with is a tool that he uh, invests in us, implanted in us so that we can do his will. We can do whatever it is that God has designed us to do. And today we're going to uh, talk about one of these tools that God gave us that's so powerful. And it's uh, differentiated us uh, from any other creation. And that gift is the power of words. And words are powerful. In Genesis 1, God used words to create the universe. And, uh, and we are created in the image of God. When, when we are created in the image of God, God also placed in us that powerful trait. And our words have creative power. In fact, the Bible said that, you know, the skill, the qualifications that um, Adam has to do his first job is actually work. Let's take a look at Genesis 2. Genesis 2 verse 19 to 20 says this, Now the Lord God has formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man, Adam, gave names to all livestock 
the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. And you can see here that whatever Adam gave, the word that Adam gave to God's creation gives identity to that creation. And that's really powerful. Whatever word that Adam gave to that to something, that something becomes whatever it is. Right? And that same power is given to, to, to Adam and to us uh, when, when God actually says, now you need to multiply. Now you need to rule. You need to reign. And, and the power of words are the powerful tool that we can use to do that. For example, right now, you know, many things is actually uh, defined by word, right? When you get married, you seal it with a vow, words. And kings and authority and leaders, government leaders, set the course of the kingdom, of, of the domain with words. But when sin enters into the world, Adam and Eve actually lost access to the Garden of Eden when God actually take them out. However, we notice that God has never taken out the power that God's already given to them. And the power of words is one of them. It still stay. That's why in the old days, when uh, somebody make an agreement and somebody says, I give you my word, that is sufficient. It's like, you know, it's like a sign agreement. But because of sin, the meaning of word become distorted. There's a trust issue. So now, instead of just, I give you my word, then we need to kind of sign a contract. It even, you know, with signing the contract doesn't really guarantee anything. And that's because sin enters in and the power of word is distorted. But throughout the Bible, we can find stories after stories on how God used word to affirm, to elevate people, to establish someone's identity. One example, Gideon in Judges 6, he was threshing uh, the wheat in the wine press. He was afraid. But then the angel came and, say, and said to um, Gideon, and it says, Oh, mighty man of valor. So the angel gave identity, gave a word that actually defined Gideon's identity. Abraham, he was old, he has no kids. But then God said to him, hey, you are the father of nations. And to Jesus, when Jesus was baptized, when he came out of the water, before he started any ministry, there's a voice of the Lord that says, uh, this is my son who I am well and that's basically set the course of the life of Jesus, his ministry, the miracles that he did, all the amazing things that he did. It's, it's defined by that word. So words are powerful. In Proverbs 18, verse 20 to 21, it says, From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. Verse 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So verse 20 says that uh, your livelihood determined by the words that you speak. And verse 21, again, life and death, the, the course of your life is defined by the word. And whatever... Uh, comes out of it, then you will eat its fruit. So whatever that you say, you will reap. That's what it says. And then you can say something that actually give life to people, or you can say something that actually harm them. And anyone else, and including you, will eat from its fruit. And we heard that. We heard news about uh, how people died because of what other people said to them. And it's really sad. You know, Cyberbullying, bullying, bullying. many things like the, the comments in the internet can cause um, chaos or you know, 
so many things that can actually result from a spoken word or a typed word. In James 3, verse 6, says this, The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and it itself set on fire by hell. Wow, that is so hard. But on the other side, Romans 10. Okay, Romans 10, verse 9 to 10 says this, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So your word can actually burn something like a fire and corrupt the whole body, or your word can actually save you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And we can see like Jesus and disciples throughout the course of their ministry, they heal the sick by using word. They cast out demon by using words. They did so many things. They teach, they give people's life by using words. So the power of word is actually a blessing that God has given us to fulfill what God has in mind when he created each one of us. And just like free will, you know, the devil's M.O. is to distort what's supposed to be a blessing to a curse. And because of that, you know, the words, the power of words that God has given us is now used as an instrument of harm. And, and here's the beauty of it. You know, God could have, when we actually fall into sin, God could have just canceled it and said, okay, there's no more power. But no, God loves us so much that He actually allowed us to keep the power. Whatever that God gives, we keep. But because it's distorted, now God gives us His Word. So that when we can use His Word as our foundation and we can align our Word with His. And that because of after the alignment, then our the, our word can actually return to its original purpose. And many times when we talk about the power of words, we talk about how to control what we say. But today we're going to take a look at at it a little deeper, and we're going to take a look how can we how we can bring back the power of words to its original design to the reason why God gives us this power in the first place. Number one, what we need to do is that we need to admit that words are powerful. One of the distortion that we believe and, and maybe it was told to us is that, you know, it's just a word. It means nothing. You know, like we heard, heard the phrase, okay, I'm just saying things. I mean, I don't really mean what I say. But we need to understand words is powerful. And with great power, there's a great impact. And because if there's a great impact, then there's a great responsibility that needs to be taken. And there's also a great opportunity that we have because of that. And that's, you know, in, in the culture that we live today, Right? We kind of like glorify free speech. We say, I can say whatever I want. I, I, just, I just have it in my heart. I just, I just need to relieve it. I just want to say whatever it is. Right? And it's, it's just me. It doesn't really affect anything else. It doesn't affect anyone else. No. Because human never created to be alone. One of the uh, characters of the image of God, you know, God, God is, is a community. Right? The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And because of that, the way we create it, we are created as part of the community. So whatever we do affect others. We are interconnected with one another. And, and because of that, our words, like it or not, whether we intend for it to affect others or not, it will affect others. And it will affect ourselves. 
So we need to understand that. And the first step to, uh, to work toward, you know, to, towards finding a solution of the problem is to admit that the problem is there, right? So yeah, word is powerful and there's a problem because of sin, but there's also an opportunity because if we can actually figure out how to use it, then it's going to bring change, positive change to the world. Let's use some time to think about the experience on how your word has caused problems for yourself and for other people. Or how your words actually bring joy to yourself and to other people. And how other people's world, word actually impacted you, positive or negative. Think about it. Think about it. For many of us, we are what we are today because we are shaped by these words that's been directed towards us. I was going through, um, you know, some counseling sessions and I, I realized what I am today, the, um, you know, the, the negative feelings and everything, it, it's very much affected by the words that I received in the past. And if you look at the history of the world, we see how society and culture change because people change the narratives. So words are powerful. It is impactful, and words have creative power. Admit it, believe it. And now that we admit it, now that we know, okay, what are we gonna do about it? Okay, first thing, okay, and this is point number two. The Bible says this, that we cannot, ourselves, we ourselves cannot tame the tongue. And it's in James 3, 8, it says, but, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. So James described taming the uncontrolled tongue is like trying to domesticate a poisonous snake that's trying to attack. Or, um, you know, the same word is actually used in Mark 5 when uh, Jesus uh, actually cast out a, the demons, a demon-possessed man that was possessed by thousands of, of demons. It's uncontrollable and no one, no human themselves can tame the tongue. And David Guzik says this. He's one of the theologians that um, write um, Bible commentary. He says, only God himself is mightier than the human tongue. Only God himself is mightier than the human tongue. So we alone, we cannot tame the tongue. I don't know how, about you, but I've tried so many times to tame the tongue. Maybe you did, you did too. You try to you know, you know that you, you shouldn't say things or you shouldn't, you know, swear too much or things like that. And you try to tame the tongue and you just could. And the Bible says that we cannot. The only way we can tame the tongue is when we actually submit our tongue to the Holy Spirit. We seek His help. We need to partner with Him. Psalm 141 verse 3, David says this, Set a guard over us my mouth board keep watch over the door of my lips so we need god to help us we are living in a world full of hate hopes and hedonism the three h right and because of that that's the input that we receive and we also live in in you know culture that's you know people call a shame culture you know, we heard it so, so many t times, like, you know, that's, you know, shame on you. That shows shame. So those input comes into our heart and it shapes us. And the input determines the output. So because we live in this, in this, in this kind of world, if we don't guard ourselves, then we receive those negative words that creates us and in turn we start releasing negative words that creates others and creates the worlds around us. 
And because of that, we get to point number three. We need to work on our inner man. Work on your inner man. Your inner man determines your outer man. Matthew 15, 18 says this, but the things that come out of a person's mouth comes from the heart. What is in your heart define what comes out? And if I'm paying attention to whatever I say, if I take a pause and say, okay, why did I say that? And I take a look into my heart and I, re I realize actually, you know what? That's what my heart feels. And it comes out. In, in my frustration, harsh words. So the condition of my heart determines the output. And because of that, you know, before I try to fix the output, I need to fix the heart. One of the things that we can do is to understand again that we are blessed. And that our identity is not defined by our circumstances. So bad things can happen to us, but that doesn't define me. Start from there. And that will help us in eliminating the effect of what people say about us. And because of that, the output, we can actually filter the output. A couple of months ago, we talked about dangerous prayer. Psalm 139. So ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart, to know your anxious thoughts, to see if there's any offensive way in you and ask him to lead you in the way everlasting. Search my heart, O oh God. Search my heart. And listen. Listen to our heart. And watch the output that, you know, that actually we receive. And after that, once we get our spirit and our mind checked, our heart checked, we get to the next step and this is step number four being intentional and purposeful in practicing the spoken blessing practice to actually bring the word of god out of us and first we have to have the word of god in us right if we don't have the word of god in us how can we actually bring it out of us Because, you know, we need to, to practice it intentionally because many times those negative words becomes a habit. Sometimes we just don't think it. Some of you probably experience that you just don't think, but it just like automatically comes out. Complaints automatically comes out. Curses automatically comes out and because it, it, it's, it's been a habit. And to change that, you need to purposely convert it into something else. James 1 says this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. So one thing that we can do is to pause, slow to listen, um, quick to listen, pause and listen. Listen to others, listen to your heart. And slow to speak. So think, and this is how we need to think. After we pause, think about how can I bless this person today? How can I say blessings over these circumstances today? For some of us, we probably think like this. All right, you know, since everything that comes out of my mouth has been negative, I'm just going to shut my mouth. I'm not going to say anything. And that's safe, right? I mean, you know, I, I don't say anything, then the world is peaceful. No. We need to, to understand there's the reason why God gives us words. And that is to blessing. If you to bless, if you don't speak out, then those blessings is not gonna come out. That's why we need to speak out. The question is not is not about you know whether you should um, be silent or speak out. No, it's what is it that you need to speak out? What are the things that you need to actually let out from your heart. So instead of refraining from talking, we need to convert it. 
convert it into an opportunity to give life. And as Christians, we find it so easy to spit up, you know, useless words. It's just like, you know, blab around or, you know, talk about many things, um, K-drama or um, food, you know. Uh, drinks or movies or whatnot, right? But when it comes to uh, bless people, then suddenly it becomes a struggle. It seems that we don't really know what to say. And because of that, we tend to just give out cliche. Oh, you know, I'll pray for you. Okay, um, God bless you. Um, you know, you, so everything's going to be okay. There's, but there's a better thing than that. And if we know that there is power in the spoken word, there's power in the spoken blessings, then we need to start taking it seriously. And we need to start being intentional about it. Okay. So there is power in the word that you speak or in this day and age in the word that you type. Because now the communications is happening through typing. So there is power in the word that you convey. So what we what what is it that we need to do? What what is it that we need to say? Right. We need to basically say the good news. I mean, you think, okay, Pastor Danny, so I, you know, do you does that mean that I need to be religious and you know always say about God this and God that, God, God this and God that? Not necessarily. If we look at two thousand years ago, when Jesus was on Earth and in time where you know at the uh, of the early church. The good news is not about religious jargon, but they are actually life-changing principles. It's a life-changing statement. Okay, one of the example, that time Caesar was considered to be God. So the good news says, no, Caesar is not God. Jesus is God. So your allegiance is to Jesus. Jesus is the God. And then, you know, it, 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 that was a time of slavery. That's why the word of God says, you know, it's, if you follow this king, this new king, King Jesus, then there is no masters, no slaves. There's no Jews. There's no Gentile. We are one. So that statement back then was not a religious statement, but that was a life-changing principle that devised the norm of the society back then. That actually gave answers to people. And that's what the good news is. That's what the Bible is. One of the message too, that actually uh, conveyed to the people back then is, you know, when you have a business, then you need to, to, to pay attention to the well-being of your uh, employees. Don't um, kind of like abuse them. Treat them fairly. Treat them with love. And this is how you need to do business. You need to actually, uh, you know, pay attention to the needs of the poor. Not just about profit. You need to start investing in people. You need to set your money for savings. You need to set your money for your spiritual development because your spirituality will define how you do your business. So those are life-changing principles. So the Bible is not about religious jargons. If you pay attention to it, yes, there are some, you know, referring uh, to, to, to salvation and things like that because it is important. However, there are many things that talks about life-changing principles. And it's applicable to many things, to family, to relationships, to the way you do business, to the way you study, to the way government needs to be run to take care of your health, to the way you deal with social issues. So dig them out. Read the Bible, dig them out, and speak them out. Because when we speak, what comes out, when we speak from the Bible, what comes out is the value of the kingdom, a life-changing principles. And this is the challenge that I want to give you in the next cell group. All right, just pick a book of the Bible, Proverbs, for example, or the book of James, or you wanted the letter of Paul, and try to unpack principles 
that you can use on everyday lives. And then convert that principles into something that you can say to others. And then you're going to find out, oh, I can actually speak blessings to other people. And there's a lot of materials in the Bible that actually can help me to speak blessings. You will not run out of material. So there's no way for children of God, you know, to actually say, I don't really know what to say. Because God has given us his word. And what we need to do is really not to come up with our own word, but to just like to just speak out whatever word that God has already given to us. Practice it. Practice it. Practice. Practice. Be perfect. All right. So words are powerful and God loves us so much that he gives us that power the power of words and God has given us also his word so that we can speak it right. so it, it's, it's like you know I'm, I'm thinking of this um, you know customer service uh, section or telemarketer section that you know they, they give us a manual uh, uh, because I was um, I was involved in designing one when I was working as a designer so it actually have like the the the, um, the, sent the exact sentences that you have to say okay first thing say hey how are you oh my name is this and you know it's good to talk to you today and then the second thing is this and after that you know uh, what to say and things like that so the Bible is just like that of course it's not going to give you you know this um, kind of like step by step but if you study it if you allow the Holy Spirit to um, to kind of like make it a rhema in you to make it alive in you and you meditate it then you will know you will have something to say and whatever you say guaranteed will give life so what are the things that we um, look for look at today the four thing right so number one admit that words are powerful and words have creative power number two know that we alone we cannot tame the tongue we need the help of the holy uh, spirit right number three then we need to work on our inner man because whatever that comes out start from what's happening inside and number four practice 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 intentionally practice practice in blessing other people and know that his word is not about you know saying religious jargons but it's about life-changing principles that you can give to yourself and to others and whatever it is will help you and others to discover your identity your purpose and your sense of belonging so start speaking to yourself you know many times we actually without realizing we curse ourselves so now we need to be purposeful and speak blessing also to ourselves and to others especially those that are close to us so start changing your world by changing your word and i know as children of god with the holy spirit in us we can change the world and it start with the every word that we speak amen let's pray Lord, we are so grateful, so amazed that you entrusted us with a creative power. You give us a, the power of word and you give us your word so that we can partake in, in giving people life-changing principles that will change the world, that will change our society, that will change our, the culture. And Lord, I just pray that you, every day you remind us to abide in you, to kind of fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit and with your word so that we have uh, the enough things to say when we need to speak a word of blessings to ourselves and to others. And thank you to, that you remind us, Lord, that you, our words have created power. And because of that, Lord, I, we just want to pay attention to every word that we speak. 
even to the people close to us, just to make sure that we speak life instead of death, that we speak blessings instead of curse, and that every word that we say have creative power as you create the universe with your word, with your word, that we actually create our universe with our word. So Father, help us. Holy Spirit, help us. We can't tame our thumb, but with you, Lord, we can convert it into a tool that will speak life to others. And I just want to bless everyone listening today. That from this day forward, we are going to start exercising this, the power of spoken blessings, of spoken word, of typed blessings, of typed word. And because of that, Lord, we know that we will be a channel of your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we receive and help us to use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, it's time to give our tithe and our offering. And if you uh, just joined us recently, if you're new, you're not obligated to give. But if you want to support our ministry, you can give by, if you're in a clay online church, you can click giving and you can give uh, through that. Or you can go to our website at claychurch.org, click giving, and you can give there. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you loved us so much that you blessed us with many things including financial blessings. Lord. Now we just want to give a part of the blessings that we receive so that we can participate in giving the message of hope to the ends of the earth. So Lord, I just pray that this money will be used wisely to reach out to those in need. And let this be our, let this be our prayer and our action to bless the nations and bless the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, a few announcements for today. Uh, just bear with me for a second. All right, in every crisis, there's an opportunity. And now that everything is online, we actually have an opportunity to bless children in Canada. And through um, you know summer mission program, program. So um, we're going to work with CEF. So here's a video from Ivan Rusley, which is the uh, CEF uh, provincial director in Ontario. So just listen to this. Hi, I'm Ivan Rusley, provincial director at CEF Ontario. There's a need for summer missionaries. Now you might be wondering when, where, how. Well, I'm excited to share with you that CEF chapters across Canada are working to put together online five-day Bible clubs where kids from across the entire country can get connected and hear the gospel. Right from your very own home, you can be a missionary right here in Canada, reaching out to boys and girls who have never heard the gospel. And while in some ways you feel like you're reverting to plan B, C, or D, maybe this summer it's God's plan A for you to serve with us. One of the exciting things about our summer missions program is you'll have an opportunity to connect with Christian youth from all across Canada. You'll spend time with them doing training and practicing teaching clubs. And after that, you'll connect with churches from across Canada that we've been able to set up. And you'll work with them to host live five-day Bible clubs, teaching boys and girls the gospel. You'll have a chance to interact with them, to play with them, to have fun, sing songs. You get to be a light in the world. You get to be an encouragement and a hope in a time that's kind of scary and confusing for many. There's so many kids who are scared, unsure of what's happening and what to do, what to make of this time. You might be one of them. But I want you to know that God is in control, that God has great purpose for your life. It didn't end when the coronavirus came, but God still has it for you. We just have to look for it. So would you pray about joining us this summer? There are millions of boys and girls across this country who need to hear the gospel. And there are hundreds of churches who need your help to share the gospel with the kids in their community. It's an amazing thing you have that opportunity to do that right from home. Maybe from your bedroom or from your kitchen or from your dining room. 
You can be Mystery of the Boys and Girls all across this country this summer. I hope to see you online. Guys, this is a great opportunity because we've been talking about you know how we can do something tangible in making a difference in the community, right? So God really opens up this door, and you can do this in pairs or you know maybe as a cell group. And if you want information, and I think it's good that to get the information first, so let me know, and we'll set up a meeting with um, a Zoom meeting with Ivan, so he can actually give you a better understanding of what's involved, right? What I know is not. Hard. It doesn't really take your whole summer, right? But NCF will train you and equip you uh, for this. And this is like a great, really great opportunity to touch the life of other people, of children especially. All right. So today uh, is also a last day to donate to our uh, Dare to Care initiatives. So um, if you want to participate, you can uh, go to our giving um, apps or through giving in playonline.church or playchurch.org and choose mission as your type of giving. So uh, the money that we receive until today, today is the last day, will go towards helping um, educations in the remote areas of Indonesia. The children and the teachers there they really need help. So that's our way we can actually uh, contribute to that. All right, so this Wednesday we are still, also, uh, we are still meeting uh, for uh, prayers and fellowship through Zoom. Okay, so um, stay tuned and uh, look for the link uh, on our Facebook. Also, the last uh, announcement, just listen to this. As, as you may, heard, may have heard, uh, Doug Ford, the government of Ontario have allowed places uh, of worship to open uh, for thir um, with 30% of capacity, right? So that's basically we can resume our physical service. However, we want to make sure that we have the pro proper protocols and uh, and really ready and guidelines to you know to make sure that it's safe for everyone. Your safety and health is our priority. So we want to make sure that you know in the next couple of weeks we're going to work on that, and we're going to update you with um, with what's happening and when we. Uh, plan to open and all the things that we uh, need to do to uh, to make sure that everyone's safe okay so yes you know we can open but we're gonna wait for a bit just to make sure we have the proper protocols and guidelines so that we all can uh, worship God in a safe way all right that's the announcement for today and uh, let's receive the blessings of the Lord the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And know that you have a great power within you. And that's the power of your words. And your words have creative power. And because of that, receive the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to just fill you up. Allow the word of God to just... Uh, Failed you and overtaken you. So that the word that comes out from your mouth will be a word of blessing. Receive these blessings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And those who receive it say, Amen. 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 Well, happy Sunday, everyone, and be blessed.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. Yes, it is, yeah, to you. Let's sing this together, even when I don't see it. Come on, even when. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. You never stop, oh, come on! Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop
Oh, his name is above, his name is above depression. His name is above loneliness. Oh, his name is above disease. His name is above cancer. His name is above every other name. Jesus. And 